Kellogg's Pep. <laughs> Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal with the prize in every package, invites you to share another thrilling adventure with Mark Fail. Battling the raging elements, fighting the savage wilderness, striking at the enemies of man and nature. One man's name resounds from snow-capped mountains down across the sun-baked plains. Mark Trail! Guardian of the forest. Protector of wildlife. Champion of man and nature. Mark Trail! It is way past midnight, and the lumber camp in Timber Mountain is silent as the grave. Suddenly, the stillness is broken as two shadows push a boat into the river which flows past the camp. Slowly, stealthily, they begin to row toward the fresh-cut logs floating on the surface. As they approach the log jam, one of them whispers, All right, Leo, put down the oars. Give me that axe. Here it is, Paul. All right. Now hold the boat steady while I start swinging. Bull, it's enough. Let's get a move on. Not yet. This is my one chance to take Matt Johnson's place as lumber king of Timber Mountain. So I'm going to make sure I build these here logs into his coffin. You've just heard the first few minutes of Mark Trail. A thrilling new adventure series being broadcast today for the first time anywhere. From now on, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same hour, and on this same station, these Mark Trail adventures will be brought to you by Kellogg's Pep. Each program will be a full half-hour Mark Trail adventure complete in itself. Now, who is Mark Trail? Well, many of you already know him as the same handsome hero featured in the popular Mark Trail comic strip in daily newspapers. Others, meeting him for the first time today, will find Mark Trail a man of about 30, well over six feet tall, with black hair and blue eyes. Mark Trail is an exciting new kind of hero, not a detective, not a soldier, nor a cowboy, but a man who combines all three and more. Mark is a woodsman who loves adventure, a true friend of man and nature. As Kellogg's Pep brings you these thrilling stories of Mark Trail, you will come to know him as a watchful guardian of the plain and the wilderness a bitter enemy of those who spoil our beautiful forests, a man whose character combines the well-known qualities of J. Edgar Hoover and Robin Hood. So remember, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time over this same station, you have a date with Kellogg's Pep and Mark Trail. Mark Trail, back from an adventure in the Arizona desert, has just sighted home base, the Davis Lodge in Lost Forest. He dismounts from his horse and quickens his step up the path. For inside the lodge, a warm welcome awaits him. Mark's girlfriend, Cherry Davis, her young nephew, Scotty, and Mark's St. Bernard dog, Andy, impatiently stand by for his return. Mark opens the door. Oh, Mark, you're home. Oh, it's good to see you. Hello, Cherry. Oh, it's so good to see you. (laughs) Hiya, Mark. We sure missed you all these weeks. Hi, Scotty. (laughs) Yes, yes, Andy, I'm home, boy. I'm home. Now, down, down, boy, down. That's the fellow. Say, you know, the best part of going away is coming home to a reception like this. Uh, say, Cherry, where's your father? Uh, he's in Washington, Mark, uh, on personal business. Oh. Come on, give me your jacket, Mark. Golly, have we got a lot to tell you. About what? Well, this fellow saw... Oh, uh, hold up, Scotty. Mark just got here. It can wait. Well, what can wait? Uh, you, you're tired, Mark. A little rest here at Lost Forest will do you some good. Uh, never mind that. Uh, who is this, uh, this Sawbuck? Sawbuck is, is a lumberjack. He works for my uncle, Matt Johnson, up in Timber Mountain. He came here early this morning and wanted to leave at once, but oh, I asked him to wait for you. Mind if I come in, folks, being as how you're talking about me anyways? Well, that's him, Mark. Sawbuck Williamson. He's a swell guy. Shake, Sawbuck. Oh, howdy. Well, I better be heading back to camp right away. I guess I'm kind of A-W-O-L. And if Bull Corbett finds out I'm missing, why, he'll be sorer than a wolf in a trap. Oh, I wouldn't want you to get into trouble, Sawbuck. 
I'm sorry I had to bring you the bad news, Miss Cherry. Well, say, aren't you going to tell Mark what happened? Yes, everybody knows about this but me. Why do you let me in on the story? Well, Cherry's uncle has been arrested by the government. What? Why? Well, that's a long story, Mark. I don't really have time to tell it all, so I'll get to the point quick. Sawbuck, there'll be plenty of time to give me every single detail. Well, how so, Mark? I'll be leaving in a minute. And I'll be going back with you. But, Mark, you've just returned from one trip. You need rest. Cherry, if you kept Sawbuck waiting for me all day, Matt Johnson must mean a lot to you. Yes, that, that's true. If he but... means a lot to you, he means a lot to me. Come on, Sawbuck. Let's head for Timber Mountain. Let's get this straight, Sawbuck. Old Matt Johnson arrested for bootlegging government timber? Yep. Right out of the Oak Hill Preserve. Why, that's nonsense. There isn't a more honest lumberman in the whole country. Well, them's my feelings. The way I figure it, there's dirty work of food. Matt Johnson's being framed. By whom? Well, ever since they put Johnson away, Bull Corbett's taken over. Just like he's been wanting to all these years. Uh, Corbett? The foreman? Yep. He and his sidekick, Leo Finger, have been running the show. Jumping jeepers. Oh, we sure are covering ground fast. We're on lumber camp property right now. All of this? Far ahead as the eye can see. We ought to sight camp in a minute. Mm, more than one crime has been committed in Timber Mountain, Sawbuck. Oh, I don't get you, Mark. Who gave the orders to cut down all those young trees? Saplings, almost. Why, Corbett. He gave the order, so down they came. But that isn't all. Bull's been telling the man to leave high stumps. He wants speed. If you cut a tree down close to the roots, it takes more time because it's harder to do. Yeah, but it's a waste of precious timber to leave high stumps. Oh, Corbett, don't worry none about that. Well, why don't the man tell him off? Mark, this year man Corbett is as mean as an outlaw mountain cat and as tough as a grizzly. They're scared, that's why. Oh, there's the camp bunkhouse. We better dismount right here. No, all right. Oh, boy. Oh, steady there, boy. Ah, we can tie the horses here, and then we better separate. Don't want Bull Corbett seeing me riding back to camp with a stranger. As you wish, so, but, but I'll run into you later. Say, uh, I didn't ask you, Mark, but how are you figuring staying up here? Well, uh, do you think Bull Corbett might be interested in hiring a new logger named uh, Smith? Smith? Well, who's Smith? I'm Smith from now on. Oh, oh, speak of that devil, Corbett. There he is, coming out of the bunkhouse. That's his sidekick, Leo Finger, with him. Uh, you've described him very well, Sawbuck. Oh, he's as mad as a wounded polecat, too. I guess he found out I was missing. Yeah, you better beat it. No, it's too late, Mark. He's spotted. Sawbuck! I've been looking for you. Oh, you have, Bull? You didn't tell me you were jumping camp, Sawbuck. Leo says you've been missing almost two days. That's right, Bull, since Tuesday. Well, I'll tell you, Bull, I suddenly got took sick. I don't believe him, Bull. He ain't been sick a day in his life. But I was. I went to see a doctor. Nothing's wrong with you, Sawbuck. But I'll give you a good reason to see a doctor. No, but... I'm boss of Timber Mountain, Sawbuck. And I have a special treatment for any hand that jumps camp. Leo. Yeah, boss. Stand him up again. I got another dose for him. Oh, Bull, don't let me alone. I but... wouldn't do that again, Corbett. Huh? Hey, who are you? The name is Smith. Smith, huh? What do you want here? A job as a logger. You? <laughs> I hire tough men, hard men, not a sapling like you. Ever tried bending a sapling, Corbett? What do you mean? I mean a sapling like me can snap back, which is more than an old man like Sawbuck can do. You talk pretty big, stranger. That don't mean you can swing an axe. I'll match axes against any man you've got here. I see. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm going to do, Smith? I'm going to take you on myself. You and me are going to have a little chopping duel. All right. If you win, I'll hire you. <laughs> but if you don't, I'm going to beat your face in and kick you out of camp myself. Well, stranger, is it a deal? It's a deal. Come on, Smith! Get in there and come! It's a boy, Smith! It's who's trying! It's the tree! It's coming down! He's won! 
Silver Corbett? Well, do I get the job? All right, Smith. You're hired. Leo, this new logger, Smith, is getting on my nerves. Didn't like him from the start, and I like him less now. I don't blame you after he made a fool out of you before the whole camp this evening. You better get rid of him. That's what I like to hear. Suppose you leave this to Leo Fingerball. A knife on the back, and then the ring. No, no, no. I don't want the rangers asking questions. Well, how will you get rid of them, then? Oh, I got ways, Leo. <laughs> Other ways. <laughs> Smith! Yes, Corbett? I want you to top that big yellow pine tree over there near the river. You know what topping a tree means, tenderfoot? Oh, sure. Climbing up the tree and sawing the top off. Yeah. Very smart. Now get going. Mark. Mark, wait a minute. Hmm? Oh, hello, Sawbuck. Well, what's the worried look on your face? Why, well, I heard what Bull told you. It's suicide, Mark. That tree was hit by lightning and split down the middle. It'll crack under you when you saw the top off. Oh, I see. Bull is trying to kill you, Mark, and make it look like an accident. Well, that may be true, Sawbuck, but I've got to take my chances. Why? Just tell him you won't do it. No, Sawbuck, no. If I refuse, Bull has a right to fire me, throw me out of the camp. Then we'll never have the chance to prove Matt Johnson is innocent. Well, all I can say, Mark, is... Good luck. Hey, Bull. Make him stop, will you? Smith will kill himself. Uh, he's getting along fine. He's practically cut through the top right now. Yeah, but the tree will snap in half down the middle for sure. It will? <laughs> Leo, this here sawbuck sure must be sick. Sick in the head. Yeah, mighty sick in the head. Hey, hey, look at Smith. He's cut all the way through. He's topped the tree. Yeah, but the tree is... It's split in half, like I said. He's going to be killed! With a terrifying groan, the dead tree splits in half as Sawbuck fearfully waits for Mark to be hurled 100 feet to the ground. In a moment, we will continue this danger-packed adventure. So stand by. Danger-packed adventure is right. But wait. Suppose you were Mark Trail. Could you take care of yourself in a spot like Mark is in? A lot would depend on your strength, your energy, and your nerves. So listen. Help build up strength. Help build up energy. Help build up sturdy bones and steady nerves. With that famous build-up wheat cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Whole wheat in its most delicious form, toasted flakes. That Kellogg's Pep. Now, I don't mean that eating Pep just now and then is all you need to build up like a strong man, but I do mean that a dish of Kellogg's Pep day after day, every single morning, is a powerhouse of food elements you need to build up strength and energy. Strong bones and good nerves. A powerhouse of all the good things that come from fresh toasted wheat. And mark this. Pep, the high-powered build-up cereal, is powerfully delicious. Every crisp toasted flake of wheat in your bowl makes you want to say, Mmm, mm, marvelous. Malty flavored pep. And pep is also known as the prize in every package cereal. A little later, I'll tell you about those swell prizes. Meantime, remember, if you want to feel fit for fun... If you want to have your fun and eat it, too... Six Pep, surprise package with a powerful powerhouse punch, Six Pep. Mark Trail, working as a lumberjack, under the name of Smith, in order to prove Cherry's uncle Matt Johnson innocent of bootlegging government lumber has sawed through the top of the dead pine tree as Bull Corbett ordered. The tree split in half, threatening to hurl Mark to his death. But then... Hey, Bull, what is he doing? Uh, that rotten bull-legged hyena. He took an extra long rope up with him. Well, I'll be dang fitted. That boy's throwing the rope and lashed out of him on one of the other trees. 
<laughs> there goes the old dead pine tree. But Smith is safe. Yeah, swung loose. Look at him dangle from the limb of that next tree. <laughs> now all he's got to do, Bull, is let himself down to the ground hand under hand by means of the rope. <laughs> it's not easy to kill that boy. No, sir. <laughs> so, but right, Leo. Not going to be easy to get rid of Smith unless... Unless what, Paul? Never mind now. Just meet me tonight outside the bunkhouse. Smith in the lower bunk near the door. Right, Leo. Right, Paul. I'm fast asleep. I looked a little while ago. All right. Let's go in. Here tomorrow morning. Oh, They'll think he drowned. An accident. Right. All right, help me lift him up, Leo. Come on. Now, heave him over. <laughs> well, that's that. Paul, well, what was that? Huh? It sounds like the bark of a dog. There it goes again. Funny, but nobody in camp's got a dog. Ah, oh, what are you nervous about? We're rid of Smith, aren't we? Now let's go back and sleep easy. Yeah, sleep easy. I'll try, Paul. I'll try. Come on, Mark, wake up. Come out of it. So, but what... So, but what happened, Andy... Andy, what's Andy doing here, Saw Buck? What, no, 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 what just take it easy, Mark. <laughs> well, tell me. You're all tuckered out. I'll do oh. the talking for a while. Oh. You see, Bull Corbett and Finger snuck into the bunkhouse, knocked you cold, and then threw you in the river. Yes, but I... I woke been... up, and I, I saw the varmints carrying you to the river. They dumped you, but Andy here dove in, pulled you to the surface, and kept you afloat. He drifted downstream with a current a couple of hundred yards, and then made for the shore. Oh, Andy. Andy, boy, we... Where'd you come from? <laughs> he must have followed you from Lost Forest, Mark. Oh, good old Andy. Good now, old look, Andy. Mark, you're, you're soaking wet. There's a tool house near. You wait in there, and I'll go back to the bunkhouse with some dry duds. Okay, let's go. There's a the tool house, Mark. Not very comfortable, but sure is warmer than out here. Oh, it suits me fine. What is it, Andy? What's the matter, boy? Andy spotted something. You think it's bull? No. No, it's only a porcupine. Over there, see? Under the tool house. Oh, he's seen it. <laughs> there goes the critter. <laughs> now, nah, now, nah, Andy. This is no time to go chasing porcupines. <laughs> Look, saw but Here's a thick of wood he was gnawing on. Let me see that. No stick of wood. That's an axe handle the porcupine had under the tool house. Well, you're right. Don't like to see good logger equipment ruined like that. I better throw it into the tool house. Oh. Take a look at this head. Well, I'll be a jumping ring tailed cougar. Yes, Sawbuck. A government axe. Probably stolen from Oak Hill Reservation. You see those sharp raised letters on the hammer face of this axe pole? You see? Yeah. It's marked U.S. Now that's why the Rangers picked up Matt Johnson. He had some logs in his river jam with his government stamp on them. Exactly. Now those logs were branded with this axe to make it look as though Matt Johnson had hijacked them from the Oak Hill government reservation. Why, those dirty wall-eyed parcels. Mark, we better pick up this here... No, I... Sawbuck, no. We'll leave it lie right where it was. Well, how come? Well, if I guess right, we can set a trap with this axe... That's all, Buck. In my haversack under my bunk, you'll find a small camera with flash attachment. Now get it for me. Tomorrow night, we'll spring the trap and you can help me. Sure, my sure, but how? Sawbuck, 
How good are you at spreading a rumor? Who started this here rumor, Leo? Nobody knows, Paul. The important thing is you're on the spot. Everybody's talking about you framing Matt Johnson with that government axe. Well, we better get that government axe into the tool house and bury it somewhere. Tonight. Mark, you hear that? Yes. Someone's walking up to the tool house. Quiet, quiet, Andy. Got the camera all set, Mark. Sure have, so, but hope we catch them red-handed. They're looking for it, Mark. Quiet, so, but... Oh, you got the axe? Yeah, I got it all right, Leo. Just where I left it. Now we'll bury it or leave it in the river. Oh, no, you won't, Bull! Hey, hey, Leo! Hold oh, that flash of light! Pull it, Smith and Stop it for the camera! Uh, Here, Andy! Take this camera back to Lost Forest! Run! Run home to Scotty! Bull, kill that dog! Throw the axe! I miss him! Quick, Sawbuck! Don't let these two get away! Sawbuck, look out! Finger's got a knife! Oh, no, you don't! Finger! They really clipped him for keeps that time, Mark. But Bull's getting away. Yeah, he's heading for the logging train up yonder. If he gets that train started, he'll make a getaway easy. We've got to stop him. Quick, after him. He's not getting away from me this time. Well, you can't jump a moving train, Mark. You'll get killed. The engine doesn't have too much steam up yet. Here I go. I made it. Don't try to stop me. Oh, cut the engine. Stop no one. Come another step closer and I'll bash you with this poker. The game is up, Bull. You can't get away. I can't, huh? This train ain't exactly standing still. You're going too fast. You won't be able to take the curve where we bridge the river. That's my business. Slow her down, Bull. She'll never hold. She'll plunge into the river with both of us. Stand your ground. Stop her before it's too late, you fool. She's leaving the track. We're going out. Corbett almost in his grasp, Mark Trail is helpless as the logging train crashes into the river. In a moment, we'll learn what happens next. So keep listening. Say, do you know what happens when you open a new box of Kellogg's Pep? Do you know what kind of a prize you get? Well, I'll tell you. You get a handsome, brightly colored statuette. A different statuette in every box of Pep. All told, there are 18 of these little figures. Cowboys, Indians, football, baseball, and basketball players. Animals of all descriptions. Collect them. Trade them with your friends. Each statuette has its own pedestal so you can stand them up in toy villages and move them around in games. Remember, there's no waiting, no box tops to send in. And you don't have to pay a single penny extra. Just open your package of Kellogg's Pep and there will be your prize statuette. Or could be you'll find a turbojet model plane with an aluminum jet-type wing, and every other part ready for you to cut out, assemble, and fly. So tell Mother to pick the package with P.E.P. on the front. P.E.P. for Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. P.E.P. for prize in every package. Yes, if you want to have your fun and eat it, too. Pick Pep, the prize package with a powerful powerhouse punch. Pick Pep. Mark Trail and Bull Corbett are aboard the old logging train which is plunged into the river. Meanwhile, Sawbuck, racing to the scene on horseback, stops short at the water's edge. One man swims clear of the train, but Sawbuck can't tell whether it's Mark or Bull. Mark! Mark! Is that you? Well, crazy. You hurt? No! I'm all right! Then swim for sure! Come on in! Not till I find Bull Corbett! Oh, great jumping. Forget him, Mark! The tide will sweep you down the falls! Can't let him die, Corbett! He deserves it! Don't be a fool, Mark! I got him! He's unconscious! 
I'm coming in to help you. Hold on, Mark. Hold on. Well, after that, it was easy, Cherry. Bull Corbett confessed, and they picked up Leo Finger, too. And Uncle Matt is free. Gosh, Mark, when Andy came running home with a camera in his mouth, I sure was jittery. I didn't know what had happened. Oh, oh, oh Scotty, oh, oh. I knew I could depend on Andy getting that film to you, and I figured you'd know just what to do with it. Well, now that everything is normal once again, suppose you take a vacation, Mark. You do need the rest. Yes, I, I guess so. Then you'll be staying at Lost Forest for a good long while? Mm, I want it, Jerry, but uh, who knows? Who knows? The next time you'll meet Mark... Oh, wait. uh, Wait a minute now. Uh, Before you tell about our next program, I'd like to introduce a distinguished American, a member of President Truman's cabinet, the Honorable Oscar Chapman, Secretary of the Interior of the United States of America, who has something important to say from Washington. It is a genuine pleasure to welcome the Mark Trey radio series. Already, Ed Dodd's cartoon strip has accomplished a great deal of good in making the youth of America conscious of the values of fish and wildlife and the great outdoors. Not only children, but grown-ups follow the adventures of Mark Trail in the newspapers. Ed Dodd has made Mark Trail a fine, clean character, and in his adventures, he spreads the gospel of good sportsmanship wise conservation of our natural resources, and red-blooded appreciation of the recreational values of fishing and hunting. The youngster who models his own behavior after that of Mark Trail is on the right trail. Each year, as the number of hunters and fishermen in this country continue to increase beyond all previous records, the task of providing fish and game becomes more difficult. Those of us in the Department of the Interior who are responsible for putting into action the federal government's program for protecting and conserving America's fishery and wildlife resources are grateful for the examples demonstrated by Mark Trail in helping us spread the lesson of wildlife management. Through Mark Trail, greatly increased numbers of people learn about the value of habitat improvement. They learn how wildlife benefits from planning of food for their particular use. They learn the lesson of clean, clear waters. The young citizens of our country can learn how they can help guard this wonderful wildlife resource. Mark Trail has done an outstanding conservation job as a cartoon strip personality. He will do an equally fine job on the radio. Uh, Many thanks, Mr. Secretary of the Interior, Oscar Chapman, for your visit with us today. And now, I'm leaving for Pine Tree Lake and some fishing. See you Wednesday. Yes, the next time you'll meet Mark Trail, he'll be fishing on Pine Tree Lake, unaware that Pine Tree Lake is full of floating debt. Tune in Wednesday, same time, same station, and find out what happens to... Mark Trail! Battling the raging elements, fighting the savage wilderness, striking at the enemies of man and nature... One man's name resounds from snow-capped mountains down across the sun-baked plains. Mark Trail! Remember to tune in Wednesday, when Mark Trail will again be brought to you by the build-up wheat cereal, Kellogg's Pep. This program came from New York. Mark Trail also appears in the comics of many leading newspapers. Look for it daily and Sunday. Listen tomorrow at the same time to Straight Arrow. And stay tuned now for Tom Mix and his straight shooters. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.